What's going on, y'all? Welcome back to another episode of The Jump. An exciting episode because this is exactly 10 minutes after uh, the Reed Shepherd show at uh, Mississippi State. So I'm getting straight into that first because I can't even like, contain my excitement. Like, this was an absolute. Uh, dude, I can't even explain. Like, if you watch the game, like, you know the emotional swings that this game brought. Um, so I'm going to start there. Number 16, Kentucky. Uh, we're headed to Mississippi State. A tough place to play. They had won five straight games. Um, I mean, early on in the game, no down low presence at all. Tolu Smith was getting whatever he wanted. Um, and then the big started to play. And then here comes Reed Shepard. He, he had had a phenomenal game so far. And then the game that I'll mention here in a minute, uh, the Alabama game um he played well not a lot of scoring but tonight Reed Shepard 32 points 7 assists 5 rebounds 11 for 14 from the field and the game winner Shepard got it it one negative point we wrote 3 and didn't foul again so i guess the 40 game didn't teach us enough but nonetheless phenomenal win Reed Shepard completely took over that game. Offensively, that might be the best performance that I've seen since 2016 when we played UNC and Malik Monk went off for 47. That game was single-handedly won by Reed Shepard. Offensive boards late, uh, the floater to win it, threes late. I I couldn't believe. This game, we did almost sell. We were up seven with like 50 seconds left. But, uh, dude, what a game. What a game from Reed Shepard. Um, Cats win 91-89 uh, down in the hump. This continues it. Cal Perry at Kentucky has still never lost at Mississippi State. He's also never lost him at home either. They beat us in the SEC tournament one time. But it's ridiculous, man. That place was rocking. They had It was a t-shirt night. It was a uh, towel night, a whiteout, sold out, like most fans they've ever had in that arena. And as Cal always says, You're going to hate me because I come to your town and we beat your team. That's what we did. It was absolutely phenomenal. Um, Antonio Reeves, 21. Didn't even feel like he played well. Uh, so that, like, Big Z defensively played outstanding tonight. He ended up with three blocks, four rebounds. So, like, the stat sheet doesn't, it's not a, a popping out stat sheet, but he balled. Ugo Played well. Adu played well. Justin, I mean, he didn't play great, but, like, his presence out there was felt. Um, I mentioned Tolu Smith. He had 21-10. and 10. Um, Shout out to Josh Hubbard, though. He did everything in his power to get those guys back in that game. He had 34 points. It was ridiculous what he was doing. He was hitting everything laid down in the stretch of that game. But um, Shout out to Reed Shepard, man. That was something else, man. Um so if you have if you if you didn't watch that game you have to go watch those highlights because that that's stuff that will get you drafted just off one game. Now to the Alabama game this past Saturday going into it it was kind of like we don't know if we will dominate them if they'll dominate us we know there's gonna be a lot of points Nato's kind of joked about it before uh, whoever got to 100 first was gonna win we did that they also never got to 100 they were they came close the second half was a little. Disturbing defensively. Um, but the story of the game is Justin Edwards. We won 117-95, to but Justin Edwards was 10 for 10, 28 points. It was the most made field goals without a miss under Cal Perry. And it was, if you've listened to this podcast uh, for just numerous weeks, you know I'm a huge Justin Edwards fan. I've been pulling for this kid every single week and never gave up on him. And what his post-game show told me was like, how strong of a human he really is. Mental health is no joke at all. And he said that was like the lowest points of his life. He had to go see a mental health like doctor, uh, like a therapist about it. Um, and he was just at a really low point. And then he goes off for 28 in a game versus the SEC leader uh, right now. So it was crazy. Um, Alabama, before this game, they were averaging 91 points per game. And it felt like we were going to hold them to like 60. Uh, the way that the defense played. We led them by 37 at one point, so like the score doesn't even show what it truly was. We had 92 with 11 minutes left. It was ridiculous. 
We shot 63% from the field in that game. And, I mean, Alabama shot 57%. If you would have told them they could shoot 57% and score 95 points, you got to think you'd win that game. But no. Um, and this was a game that brought out many celebrities. Joe Mixon was in attendance. I can't remember ever seeing him in a game before. Josh Paschal came back. He was the Y. And then Jaden Quentin, it's a five-star uh, Kentucky commit. He was also there. Um, so it brought out everybody. But uh, they got to see a show. It was the most points versus a ranked team in school history. Um, just an insane performance. And after the game, like, NATO's press conference was one of the funniest things ever because he's, he's the offensive guru. And um, we had a, a stretch where we scored – 28 points in six minutes, and he was, like, mind-blown. He was like, excuse me? Uh, and he would like, keep looking at the paper to, like, see, like, make sure that's right and stuff. He was like, can you repeat that, please? Like, he, he, he had no idea how dominant this offensive performance was. And, I mean, he, he had all the, all the good things to say after the game. Uh, so shout-out to Nate Oates for that. But it's still just, like... People that want him to be the replacement, it's so funny because Cal just kind of owns him. Uh, like, Nate Oates had one good win against us last year. And other than that, it's been dominance from, from John Calipari. But, uh, so this year marks the 121st season of Kentucky basketball. This is the first time ever that 11 different players have scored 13 or more points in a game this season. Aaron Bradshaw, Jordan Burks, Rob Dillingham, Justin Edwards, Zvonimir Ivicic, Trey Mitchell, Ugana Nienso, Antonio Reeves, Reed Shepard, Adu Thiero, DJ Wagner have all scored over 13 points. It's crazy. And it's also the first time we've ever had five different freshmen win the SEC Freshman of the Week. Um, so Justin won it last week uh, after that, that performance at, versus Alabama. But, man, what a week. What a past few days. Like, that game was Saturday. This is Tuesday now when I'm filming this. Man. This game was kind of like scary. It was like, can we get through this one? And boy, did we. This this was an awesome, awesome Tuesday night game at Mississippi State. Um, man, we were four and a half point underdogs too. So, um, do 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 with that what you wish. But I mean, it was it was an amazing night, amazing night. But other college basketball around around the country. Um, number two, Houston went to number eleven, Baylor. On Saturday, Houston won 82-76 in overtime. Um, I kind of wish the Jamal Shedd shot would have counted because that would have been electric. But that Cisse uh, for Baylor, I hate to like bash on a kid, but he sold bad. There was three different uh, moments. I think he – so he could have won the game with a free throw at the very end of regulation. Then he had a dunk in overtime where he just went up and lost the ball – and I think he fouled like real late um, to kind of screw the game for them. But um, it was an all-time classic. It was amazing. It was a mix of like two different types of basketball. Um, it was just it was awesome. This this new Big Twelve delivers every week. Um, honestly, the most controversial game of the week, not even because of what went on in the the forty minutes of basketball. Wake Forest upset number eight Duke. 83-79. And this kind of looked like it would be the end of court storming. Um, Kyle Filipowski, well, I, I was watching it live, and when I saw him walking off and he spins and falls or whatever, I was like, oh, my gosh, dude. Like, he's he's hurt. Then they show the overhead view. Flip pushed the kid. Like, he got – he bumped knees with somebody. Then it was him. Like, he – these kids didn't do anything wrong in this court storming. And then John Shire wants to act like he, like they're the victim and they got shot or something. Like, it was ridiculous. But leave it up to the Dukies to come up with the worst ideas possible on how to fix court storming. Jay Billis literally says with a straight face, in all honesty, arrest the kids that storm the court. Which is, that's something that like people would joke about. Like that is not, that's ridiculous. Um, I've also heard that literally the best thing that I've heard. I don't. I don't think it should change at all. Like, it, it, nobody's been hurt. Not one person has been hurt from it. Um, like they were trying to like complain about it, trying to find something. They didn't even. End, they didn't even end up sending him off to get MRIs or anything because of how little it was, and he like bruised his leg or something. Like, it was ridiculous. Um, but 
Jay Billis, that is ridiculous. The smartest thing that I've heard, if they're trying to change anything, is give like ten seconds grace. And like, but there's there's certain times that like, um, like you're not gonna be able to just like stop like the players. Like, I, it, it's ridiculous, man. Like, it, there's gotta be a little bit of time. Like, and the players also have to be like intentional about getting off the court. Flip was walking, waiting for something to happen, and. I mean, it's on him. Like, you can't sit here. Same with Caitlin Clark a few weeks ago. Like, she did that. Flip did this. If they got hurt, that's their that's their own fault. Like, these these dudes, like, court storming is what makes college basketball college basketball. It's what makes college football college football. This is what makes it so different from the pros. If we ban this, then, like, you're just saying you want to be like the pros. And, like, it'd just be ridiculous to be at that point um, in 2024. Like, this has been happening for like a hundred years, and now people want to freak out because a Duke player, you know, and, and I, th- I, th- I don't remember who it was that said this. I thought Flip was different. I thought Kyle Filipowski was different from those annoying white Duke players. This shows that he's just the same. He's the same as the rest of them. That was ridiculous. I couldn't believe that he complained about that. Court storming needs to stay exactly how it is. No rules. Um, and it was kind of funny. Mississippi State tonight. Uh, they put up like a sign or on, something on the billboard that said like uh, please stay off the court in in uh, like the following of a win um, do not storm the court and stuff and like that wasn't going to stop it either like there, it's not going to happen you're not going to stop this um, like some people are just insane to think it like Seth Davis and Jay Bill sound like idiots just straight up like and they think that they think they're like doing something good for the sport. This is not good for it. Like it's just one of their dookies got hurt and it, it hurt their feelings. And like it was his fault. It was Kyle Filipowski's fault. As a Kentucky fan, I like Kyle Filipowski, but like this is ridiculous the way that he reacted to this. Like people have like been through much. Work. Like Cam Newton this weekend got jumped by like four dudes and walked it off better than Kyle Filipowski when he shoved a guy and then walked off like he had died. Like, it was ridiculous. But um, shout-out to Wake Forest. You know, one way to stop this, I don't remember who it was. It was some, somebody on Marquette said, uh, here's an idea of how to stop court storming. Just win the games. It's a good point. Good point. Um, one team that's not winning games, the DePaul Blue Demons. The end of the Georgetown game was atrocious. They could have won that game. And they they missed the, a wide open layup. Uh, let me see what they're at right now. Um, in this, so their record is three and twenty four. They're zero and sixteen in conference right now, and they might actually have an zero and twenty conference uh, season this year. They play when this releases. They play Xavier at Xavier, who's a nineteen and a half point favorite. Then they play Butler at home. St. John's at home, and then at Seton Hall. It's looking like they might go 0-20, and it'll be the first 0-20 conference season ever because not a lot of conferences have 20 um, have twenty games. So it'd be wild. Uh, so shout out to Paul, I guess, for making history, um, potentially. So Oklahoma at Oklahoma State, it was absolute chaos. It fit the football name, Bedlam. Um, the ending of it, one of my favorite players in the country. If you don't know who JVN McCollum is, you're sleeping, and you need to do your research because this dude is cold. Um, he was a, a big part of the reason why Oklahoma got ranked so high to start the year uh, was was his his game. And, like, at the end of this, he gets a sidestep three where his foot is hovering the out-of-bounds line, and this place is rocking, and he turns around, and it's just a bunch of old Oklahoma State fans heated. Um, it was in in the Gallagher-Iba arena or whatever it's called. Um, just cold-blooded. That's all it was. It was awesome to see from uh, J.V. McCollum. Um, so I, I know this is a little short episode, but I have one thing, college football. This was something really weird. This was Saturday during games. Like, it was a weird timing type of thing. Eric Bieniemy, uh takes the UCLA job as the associate head coach slash offensive coordinator. So this is a, an interesting move because he didn't get fired from Washington – they have the number two pick in the draft. They can do a lot. Uh, they they have a young core, and then he just he dips. So I don't really know. 
I don't, I don't understand what associate head coach is. Like, I don't know if they're going to be, uh, like, 50 50 with it, but him as the OC is going to be nice. I'm, I'm excited to see that, but, like, it was just a weird move. Um, but I guess UCLA going into the Big Ten, it's a big opportunity to maybe get a head coaching job um, after that. So uh, maybe he'll have just more control over the the play calling or something. I'm not real sure, but uh, I'm excited for that move. Um, and a couple other things, college – well, one thing, college basketball, and then another just college sports thing. Um, so this was another – uh, Jay Billis thing. So there's a possible March Madness expansion, which, in my opinion, is stupid. 68 is perfect, like, at what it is right now. Uh, I mean, a 64 team bracket looks beautiful. Um, so I think that just needs to stay. But uh, Jay Billis had this legendary quote, which I couldn't stand by more. Never underestimate the NCAA's capacity to do something stupid. And if they did this, it would be profoundly stupid. Facts. A March Madness expansion would be absolutely ridiculous. Uh, so shout out Jay for having his voice uh, at that point and, and saying that because if they do this, like, it's gonna take like the the spark out of it. Like, there's gonna be a million teams in it. Like, certain teams will just never miss the tournament ever again. Um, but yeah, I don't know. And then lastly, UMass joins the MAC, which is really weird because this is almost a downgrade because. Uh, they were in the A-10, who's better at basketball. So, and I consider UMass a basketball school. I mean, they've made a Final Four. Um, so I would say that could all honestly do it for you. Um, but they're obviously joining the MAC for football, which they were prior prior to this, they were independent. Um, so now it's only UConn and Notre Dame that are independent. So they'll, they'll make money from being in the MAC. But it, it, they just don't fit in the MAC. UMass going to, like, Ohio doesn't make sense to me. But I don't know. They, they can get to the point that they just run this conference though in basketball. I can't remember who the last couple of years are of the MAC winners in basketball, but like it's usually like Akron, Ohio, uh, like Toledo, just like stuff like that. But like they could legit go and just run this conference for years and, and years going. So, um, but it was a short episode this week. Um, some good games coming up this week, and I, I'll, I'll list off a couple uh, before I head out to look forward to. Um, I think this weekend for, I don't know if our Tennessee game will be CBS, but I think this one this weekend is um, when we play Arkansas. So uh, I think that'll be our last CBS game ever once they, because they go to the Big Ten next year. Um, it'll be, it'll be weird, but um, so I, one, one noted game I do like, Number 14, Alabama at Ole Miss. I'm excited for that one. Uh, that, that could change up some things. Um, Gonzaga at, at San Francisco. That one is going to be electric. Um, no, number 21, Dayton at Loyola, Chicago. That's got a big big things on the line there. Um, and that's a Friday night game. That one's going to be must see TV. Uh, Kansas. They travel to Baylor. That's the one I was trying to think of. Kansas at Baylor uh, this weekend, so Kansas won the first one. Um, Florida at South Carolina, two ranked SEC teams. Number five, Marquette at number 12, Creighton. Creighton's been known to uh, upset some teams. Welcome to Omaha. Um, Number four, Tennessee at number 14, Alabama. That one will be great. Uh, Honestly, number one, Houston at Oklahoma. That could be interesting. Um, number 23, Gonzaga at number 17, St. Mary's. So this, honestly, the, uh, WCC is kind of St. Mary's conference now. Um, Seton Hall versus UConn. So that's, that's the Dan Hurley matchup. Um, but that, that's about, that's a, I mean, that's a good amount of games, but that's about it for the games that I'm looking forward to. Um, but I've mentioned it, I've hinted at it. I don't know when I'm going to start doing it. I've got three or four guests lined up. Um, one Kentucky football, one not on the team, but connected to Kentucky basketball, or I guess two for that matter. Um, but be looking out for uh, guest appearances soon uh, and some interviews on the podcast. So uh, thank you all for tuning in to another episode of The Jump. Uh, leave some comments and 
leave any Reed Shepherd uh, hate. We leave that behind. Reed Shepherd's a goat, man. Uh, so thank you once again for tuning in to another episode of The Jump. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, uh, do all that. It, it goes a long way. And have a great rest of the week. And peace.